Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to iRise Wellness. Um, we have a guest speaker today that's going to join us and talk to you about a wonderful book, um, College Safety. And my name is Leticia Yarbrough. This is the iRise Experience. And I am founder and CEO of iRise Wellness. We have Nancy here today. Nancy, if you can introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nancy Bradford, and I am the president of an Achievement Channel. Um, and we are, um, and my book division is one of our divisions of my company. Uh, I'm one of my companies is an informed parent. And so this book is coming out of the need to have our parents informed about the co different aspects of the college prep and college experience for African-American students. Yes, absolutely. So I spent some time with your book, Nancy, and I had some questions that I would love to ask you um, in this time, in this space. And as we, we communicate, I would love to ask you more questions to follow up. Um, so first question I have for you was kind of what was your vision and your purpose for creating this book? Okay. So let me give you some background. I am a health educator by profession, and I just retired three years ago. I was the regional director for the Family Health Programs Metropolitan Regional Office for the New York State Department of Health. And so I've always had an interest in maternal child health issues. And so one of the programs that I was responsible for managing, well, two of them that play into this book um, was the Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Program and the Rape Crisis Program. So a lot of the information that I dealt with, a lot of the people that I dealt with came out of those programs that had me feel the need to write this book. Um, one of the things about the um, Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Program, as we talked to, to kids, we needed to give them an alternative for getting pregnant. OK, and one of those things, one of the um, things that we did was had college um, college programs. So we started talking to kids about going to college because about doing something other than having a baby. And what I found, even as we were doing these programs, that parents didn't know, pa parents didn't know what they didn't know. And so we would do things to get kids ready to go to college and do the college prep. Um, and then kids would go off to college and then they would succumb to some of the things that I write about in the book. And again, when I talk about the rape crisis program, you know, they, they um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the numbers, but um, preg uh, rape is one of the problems that we have on the college campuses because um, freshmen are at highest risk for, for rape, um, especially when they have no knowledge, when they're sent off with no prep. And there is a correlation between rapes and the kinds of schools you go to. So if you go to a school, that, uh, a person, as I want to say person, it's not always just young ladies, goes to a school that has a big sports program, um, they, they can be at higher risk for rape. If they have a, a high Greek program, which or any of the Greeks, there's a higher risk. They're at a higher risk for rape. But parents didn't know these things when they sent them out. So sometimes people can see, because it has been my experience, you'd see people go off to college and then in six months uh, they come home and they don't go back. And so we never have those conversations about, well, why didn't Jane go back or why didn't Johnny go back? And so that we can inform our community about some of those things. So that was one of the impetuses that I had for putting this book out there. But, but there are other things because we wanted, I want kids my motto is, there's two things. An informed parent is improving the African-American college graduation rate one parent at a time. Because as, as I um, inform and instruct parents, that's going to increase the people that will graduate. But the other thing that I want parents to know is that I want their kids to return home the way they sent them. I want them to return home whole. And so some of the things that are in the book are things that parents can have conversations with their kids about prior to them going so that they won't get caught up in drugs or they won't um, get caught up in alcohol 
One of the things that happened to my son, my son graduated from Morehouse. When he was graduating, one of the friends that he started with in freshman year was in, was in jail because he got drunk and committed vehicular homicide. And so, you know, if the conversation about, because you're now on your own on college, does not mean that you just drink everything and then get behind the wheel. So, you know, so those were the kinds of things that I remember talking to my kids about. You know, um, I remember saying to my daughter, because my daughter didn't date before she left for college. And, and then right before she's leaving, I'm going like, oh, I've got to tell her this, I've got to tell her this. But I said, make sure that you don't leave, if you're at a party, if you're at someone's house, that you don't leave a drink and come back to it. You go and dance, whatever. And, and so she told me when she came back after the first, she was on a quarter system, that other girls hadn't been given this information. And so she took it upon herself to make sure that other people didn't find themselves in situations where they came back and their drink, drink had been tampered with. So it was little things that I saw that I knew um, that if parents don't know these things, you have parents who've never been to college and then you have parents who went to college 20 years ago and what college was 20 years ago is not what it is today. So I say, um, one of my sayings, my, my Nancyisms, is that that um, ignorance is expensive on so many levels. It's expensive in terms of funding. It's in terms of, but you send your prize, you send your pet, and something happens to them. And I remember now. I'm kind of old, but I remember when when my when I, I went to a community college. But I remember that first day of school, we were going in to register, and all the males that were um, the upperclassmen were waiting by the door to kind of check out the new people, the new young ladies. Okay. And, and that was many years ago. And I, I can only imagine because now you can do it on Facebook. They don't have, you don't even have to wait until someone gets to campus to um, figure out, you know, who's who and, and whatever you want. Yeah. I I said six people on Instagram before they even prior for them, even they know who their roommate is. They've talked mm -hmm. to them. They've mm -hmm. had, absolutely. So, so that was the impetus for the book. Yeah. So I think as I was reading the book, I thought about um, kind of also what you alluded to. This is written for parents, but I've also think of it being, beneficial for students like maybe it'd be a space where students will have this conversations with one another as your peers kind of what your daughter do, did mm -hmm. have you seen how you had can you see or have you seen this book being used in that way uh so far I haven't seen that uh, be done but uh, I certainly would love to have kids come together and start talking about um this, the, the book. So let me give you an example of something that just happened. I had a parent who had been given a copy of the book and she called me, her son went to Temple and there was a problem with some violence off campus and her son lived off campus and she wanted to talk about it. And so the first thing I said to her was, um, when you dropped your son off at school, was there a parent orientation? And she said, no. I said, bad move. I said, that's a bad step. I said, um, step number two, did you read the annual, the college's annual safety and fire report? That's required by law to be published every October. Now, because of COVID, it was transferred. They didn't have to do it until January. But did you read that before you dropped your child? She said, oh, I didn't know anything about it. And so I find that parents and students don't know. And there is so much information. Some schools like uh, somebody, I talked to someone who went to Ohio State and I was talking to the parent. Their, their uh, annual safety report was over a hundred pages. Um, the, uh, Temples was 60 pages, but they had met because of the violence that was happening outside the campus. They had met with the president and the parents weren't happy with the response. And I said to the parent, you know, they're not giving you anything that, you know, this, this, you're paying for these services. So, um, 
So I would guess yes, and I, I'd like to think that that um, kids would read the book. But again, I always I talk about the um, the annual safety report because I'm not sure if you know the story of the Cleary report. Are you familiar with the Joan Cleary? Okay, so you're good because yeah. a lot of people aren't. But you know, she um, you know they thought she was safe. And they didn't have any information. So now parents have the opportunity and kids. I remember uh, my daughter went to Northwestern and I always kind of look at, I look at different um, reports and a lot of the schools will have trainings. So I think it's good because in the book I talk about um, some of the, at the end I talk about what's the college's responsibility and what you should, they should do before. Um, schools have programs. So if it's bullying, Maybe they have an anti-bullying training. Um, if it's sexual assault, they may have a uh, program on, uh, what is it called? Uh, a, don't be a standby person or something like that. But there are a lot of trainings. And what I say to parents, and I will say this for students, if your school doesn't have something that you need, look at some of the other schools and see what programs they have in place and then go back to your school and say, we need a program like school does now. Uh, and and I'm, I'm coming back to your question. Uh, I was doing, I was talking about the uh, clear report to a group of parents and I had the report and I was saying to the parent and at this school, they had six rapes on campus last year. And, and the father said, Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't tell my daughter because that's the school I want her to go to. And I said to him, I'm not telling you not to have your daughter go to the school. What I'm saying to you is that when you arrive on campus, you say to the president, I'm reading your Cleary report that there were six uh, rapes on campus last year. What are you doing differently to protect my daughter? that is a different conversation. That is a different conversation. And that's why this book is about what I write. And I say to parents, because I want the parents to be involved, bring them in and then, you know, start that conversation. Cause it just takes one student, you know, we're all in the dorm room together, we're in a quad. We can start talking about those things. My, my daughter's uh, roommate, her first roommate, which didn't work out well, her first roommate, would brought someone off campus into their room. Uh, he wasn't even a student. And I was concerned, and that was, you know, 25 years ago when things were a lot milder than they are now. And I would say to her, well, you know, she letting him in your room? You know, that, that was not cool. That was not a, you know, but they hadn't, hadn't had those conversations. Um, and I hadn't had that conversation, you know, so, Yes. So, yes, I think that it, it's and I'm and, you know, and I might kind of do something and just with the students in mind, like a workbook, because I'm working on a guided journal for parents. One of the things when as I was writing this, the, uh, the person that helped me with my editing said, well, you need to do another book. You need to put this in for parents. And I'm like, no, I'm tired. I don't want to write anymore. I want to. Mm -hmm. But I see that I want to do a guided journal because some parents don't know how to have some of these conversations with their kids. And so I don't want them not to have it because the, the parent is not comfortable with some of these, because it doesn't have to be the parent to have that conversation. Wow. It can be like in New York state, in New York city, we have school-based health centers. Um, we have nurse practitioners, we have psychologists, there are doctors there, that they may be the person that had that conversation. Mm -hmm. It might be a trusted neighbor or trusted family member or a clergy person, but not to have that conversation. There's no need to not have that conversation because you're not comfortable having it. Because some stuff, I don't want to know about my son, okay? I, I, I don't want to know. And so some of those questions, I designated my brother to talk to him. That's so. awesome. So it's, and it really, it speaks to to me as a, as a reader, as it takes a village to be able to mm -hmm. hear to all. Um, because there were a lot of different chapters. One, it can be hard to read for some people that have gone through some of this. Um, as far as exactly. talking, as far as, you know, 
rape and just different things like this, it can be a hard read. So being able to tap on people that have those resources that has that, mm-hmm. that has that knowledge could be very beneficial. Um, if you could think about something in the book, you can go to a page and you can just give us a read of maybe a, a page or two of maybe like your favorite kind of chapter. Um, and what I'm thinking about this, when you talk about the benefits, I'm thinking students need to hear this as much as the parents need to hear this. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of times where I'm from California, where the student is the translator for their parents a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And that, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that goes here in New York. A lot of the times the, the student is that, is the parent. Um, and if they don't have this information, their parent doesn't have this information. So um, I, I think about how this book can be beneficial in so many different ways. Um, so if you want to go to your read. Okay. Uh, this is a true story. I, I find that when I, as I was writing this, I was thinking about stories, things that happened. This is a the chapter on stalking. One day, um, it's page 39. One day, a colleague and I were walking down Flatbush Avenue in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, New York. We were on our way to a meeting at the headquarters of a community-based organization funded to run one of the state's adolescent pregnancy prevention programs. After crossing Eastern Parkway, we noticed what at first looked like a flyer posted by people looking for a lost kitten or puppy. Upon closer examination, we saw a flyer with a full frontal nude picture of a young lady. Under the picture were the words for a good time call this young lady's with a woman's name, address, and phone number. Uh, we were stunned. Hadn't seen anything like this before. We couldn't leave the flyer up there. I'm thinking, what would I want done if this were my daughter's picture on a pole. So we took the flyer down. But when we looked further down the street, we saw copies of the flyer attached to every tree, sign, and bus stop post. We took down as many as we could, but we were on our way to our meeting. We were angry and confused by the time we got to the meeting. I asked the receptionist about using a shredder to dispose of our stacks of flyers. While responding, she happened to glance at the flyer and turned it bright red. We found out the person uh, on, in the picture was a well-known and well-liked member of the community. The receptionist pointed us in the direction of the shredder before running off to call the young lady in question. The young lady was horrified and embarrassed when she was informed about the posting. She immediately enlisted friends to remove the rest of the posted flyers. But the next day, all of the flyers were reposted. Um, and this was um, this was an um, example of, of cyber stalking. This uh, this young lady had broke had broken up with her boyfriend, and he wanted to get back with her. And when she said no, he posted these flyers. Now, cautionary tale: you need to be careful what you let people take have pictures of you um, of you know. Uh, and, and at the time that this happened, uh, doing something like this was not against the law. Since then, a law has been passed making cyber stalking uh, a crime. But at that point, there was nothing that she could do. Um, so, yeah, so in reading that, because, you know, your parents don't think that you're, you know, this internet, this internet is just very interesting. And, and kids, young kids are getting... Uh, um, emails from their friends, you know, send me a picture of you, nu- me, you nude. And without those conversations, yeah, absolutely. It's, no- it's normal. It's, 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 it's normalized. Yeah. And, and unless you, um, no one says don't do it. And once those pictures are out there, never give them back. Yeah. So we need to talk about that. We need to talk yeah. about that. And I'm thinking also that there is no real laws surrounding social media. Um, and how to use social media. There's cyber stalking and things like that. But social media is this, um, this world um, that people cannot define in, in legal 
this, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that that also makes things hard. And then you have things that um, we have now where OnlyFans is a social media platform to be nude, to share those things, and to make money off of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we have moved into a very different world of how we use and how we communicate and how we share. Um, but that there's still information that needs to be had with these students prior to going to college. And I, and I think your book alludes to that. Um, I'm thinking also when you talk about the signs um, on, on the, you know, on the, trees and just different things like that. I'm thinking about all the young black women that have gone missing and no one's really talking about them. Mm -hmm. Um, How it could been, it started from safety because we're not talking about safety in the ways that we need to be talking about safety to our young black women. Right. Um, What do you, if you could provide some information, if you're of really short synopsis of what do you think that we should be talking about at the forefront when we're talking about safety? I think um, the, 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 the basic um, the premise where you start is self-care and mm-hmm. to, to care about yourself in a way that you protect yourself. There's a barrier and you're not so free with with everything that you are that you hold on to, um, and I and I know I, I, we we live in a sharing society that they they share. I mean, when I talk about identity theft, you know they they they're sharing. You know, I'll, I'll go down the street and I'll hear see kids share a, a, the the plug. You know, they're listening to music, and then somebody they'll share the the, the earbud or whatever. So they they're sharing. That's what they know. But you need to hold, learn how to keep some of you back. Case in point, I was talking to an emergency room physician, and he says, um, we, we, and "I think I put this in the book." He says, um, "You know, he's uh, he's in D.C. near college campus, and he says, you know, sometimes uh, some a student will come in with an ailment to the emergency room, and they will have a friend with them. They'll bring a friend from school, and and the doctor will say." do you want this person to stay while, you know, as we, while I ask you these questions yeah. and the person will say, sure. And he said for me to let parents know, to let students know that they should say no, because they don't know what questions they're going to be asked. Wow. And now I'm asking personal questions. And now here's somebody who may be my roommate, maybe my friend today, may not be my friend. And, and there are certain questions that they may ask that you may not want them to know, but you've now given the doctor permission to put that all out there. Yeah. So again, that's about protecting a little bit of yourself and knowing that you don't have to share everything with everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I think that that's really valid. Um, as we are kind of closing out, if you could, you talked about creating like a journal entry, like journal prompts to follow along with the book. Would there be anything else with this new knowledge that you have that you would like to add or recreate within this book? Um, okay, I, let me just say this. When I first started writing, the one piece that I, I was going to do was mental health. But I felt that that was too big of an issue, especially, and we're seeing it more now for college students. And I, that was not my wheelhouse. So um, in the future, I will probably write something with a mental health professional, but I didn't want it to get lost in the sauce here. But the whole mental health issue um, is a very important piece that needs to be um, talked to uh, with our kids, especially with our kids. And um, yeah, that's that's the one thing that I kind of left out because I knew I could not give it the attention that it deserved. Yeah. And with the, the pandemic, we have seen more mental health cases um, in our young kids. 
um, Mm -hmm. and their lack of connection. Like you talk about, they share all the time. They didn't have the opportunity to share and still have, do not have the opportunity to share the ways that they used to before. Um, And Mm -hmm. I think this, this new whatever this new normal is has been an adjustment for a lot of people um but i'm glad that the black community is really talking a little bit more about mental health and the importance of mental health and self-care and i think that even before this pandemic uh there's an organization called the steve fund i think it's the steve fund the steve organization which is a organization that speaks to mental health issues for people of color. And so there's a paradigm that they're working on because even before, again, the pandemic, um, there was differences in the way um, people people of color um, perceived things, how they reacted and how they were treated in college and needed to be addressed. Uh, so that's an organization or the National, Organi- National Association of Mental Health is someplace, but we need to just recognize, um, I'm in an organization, a Facebook group, and uh, someone, one of the parents wrote in, she said, uh, my son just got his grades and he failed everything. What do I do? And so some of the people in the group, because the, the, there are mental health people in the group said, uh, first of all, you let them know that it's still valuable, you still love him. Um, and, and you don't know why he didn't do well. It could be a lot. Of, it could be a lot of reasons, um, but that person not treated right could could go off and do something. You know, could as um, Les Brown says, make a permanent decision for a temporary problem. Not not passing his grades is temporary because how where you start is not always where you finish. But if you end your life, then it's permanent. So. So Nancy, I, I want to thank you for sharing your time with us and your knowledge. If anybody does not have this book for parents, students, please get it. You can find it. Tell them where you can find it, Nancy. It's on Amazon. They'll send it to you right away. And if they have any questions, um, I can be found and it's the last chapter is final thoughts Mm -hmm. and um, I can be found because I have also, if you go to the last chapter, page 105, I've developed another resource for parents. It's a free download, 10 things every parent should do before taking their kids to college. And um, it's at the, let's see. The link is bit.ly backslash before dash college to get your copy. Um, And I will be sure to send it. It's just an infographic uh, sheet that talks about um, getting your your college, uh, getting the college computer um, up to date with the software so that, you know, um, the software is up to date, getting your shots, getting some, I can't remember what the 10 things are, uh, but just to be, you know, make a plan. Um, someone wrote, somebody, one of the uh, ladies in the group, their child is going to a school that's in the hurricane zone. And they were asked as if they went out the, the student's application um, in case of an emergency, what would happen to your emergency? What would happen to your student? Parents need to think about um, what, if there's an emergency, if there's a hurricane, if there's a California, there are fires, what, what's the plan to have a plan? So yes, and, there's and a lot. Most, and most universities have uh, an emergency like text link that mm-hmm. you can sign up, parents can sign up for it too. So if there's anything mm-hmm. that goes on on campus, that's a safety issue. Parents mm-hmm. can be notified as well. Um, I'm mm-hmm. a higher education professional uh, by trade. And if you want to reach Nancy, she also has her email at nancy at the college safety book.com. Um, and thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and energy. Have a great day. Thank you.